Hi. I'm glad to see you again. I thought today we'd just do a fantastic little winter scene, and I'll show you how you can do a very, very nice little scene quite easily. So let's have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. While they're doing that, let's go on up here. We have our standard old canvas up. It's all prepared with a, with a liquid white. It's all slick and wet and ready to go. So let's, let's go to. I think today I'll start out with a small touch of alizarin crimson. Just pull a little bit out, tap the bristles firmly, firmly, firmly right there. And that, that assures a nice even distribution of color all the way through the bristles. Good, let's go on up here. Now sometimes when you do winter scenes, they can, they can get so cold that they're almost unpleasant. So I like to put a little tiny warm spot in my winter scenes. And it's just a matter of personal preference. If you want it to look colder, just leave out this little touch of crimson because it's, this is your painting. You do it the way you want it. If you want it to be very cold, just leave out this one little bit right here. And that'll do it. Okay, a little touch more right in there. Now we don't want to set this sky on fire. All we want to do is just put a nice pinkish glow in the sky. Something like so. Tell you what, without even cleaning the brush, I'm going to go right into a small amount of the thalo blue. Now the blue is so much stronger than the crimson, you don't even have to clean your brush. You just go right in there and just tap it the same way. Okay, now then, let's come right up in here and just dance in a happy little sky, just using little crisscross strokes. Like so, like so. There we go. And bring it right down to the crimson. Once again, the blue is so much stronger, it'll absolutely eat your crimson up and kill it. There, very lightly. Okay, we're gonna have a little winter scene today. So let's let's just go ahead and put some blue down here. This will end up being shadows in our snow or or water or whatever. I don't know. Let's we'll sort of make that decision when we get there. There we go. Just drop it in. Okay. It's also a good way to clean off the excess paint off your brush. Shoot, while we're doing that, we'll, here and there we'll drop a little crimson in too. Just a little. Okay, let's wash your brush. Scrub the old brush. Shake off the excess. <laughs> and then just splatter everybody. All right, with a good, clean, dry brush, I wanna go right back up here where this pink and blue come together and very gently, very lightly, just using the little crisscross or X strokes, I just wanna blend it so it's very smooth so you can't tell where one color stops and the next color starts. Just blend it, blend it, blend it. There, start in the light area and work toward the dark area. Okay. And that gives us a nice, quick little sky. Alrighty. Let's do a, let's do a fantastic mountain today. I'm gonna to start with some midnight black. We'll take some Prussian blue, Prussian blue. Oh, a little Van Dyke brown in there. What the heck, a little crimson, whatever looking for dark color. Should look black. Okay, pull the paint out as flat as you can get it and then just take the knife and cut across. Get that little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Okay, let's go right up in here. Maybe, maybe we'll have a big mountain that lives way up here in the sky. Boy, that's a big son of a gun. But this will give you some practice making mountains. And if you can make mountains, you've certainly, certainly made friends with a knife. If you can make these mountains, then you can take the same effects that you learn making these and create just unbelievable things. Rocks, stones, roads, houses, uh, entire paintings can be done with a knife once you make friends with it. So this is excellent, excellent practice. There. And I lived in Alaska for a dozen years or so. And I'm sort of crazy about mountains. They're a lot of fun to paint. Okay, after you have your basic outline on here, take your knife and firmly 
get tough with it. Scrape off all the excess paint. You, you can't get it all off. The value is in the fabric. Scrape off all that you can get off, though. And the more of that paint you get off, the easier the next step is. Okay, now then, we want to just, this removes even more paint and blends it out. And because the canvas is wet, the paint will move on here. Just grab it and pull firmly. You're still trying to remove excess paint. There we go. Firmly pull it, pull it. And then just blend it. Just blend it. And you can soften points and peaks. There. Okay, that gives us a very nice little base to do a fantastic mountain. Okay, I'll wash the old brush again. Shoot, that's the most fun of this whole technique. It's just washing the brush. <laughs> you can take out all your hostilities and frustrations and anger and you can get all those bad feelings out just beating the brush. Okay, I'm gonna just take titanium white. And once again, pull it out as flat as you can get it, just to really get tough. And go down here, cut across, and our little roll of paint. Always loading the knife the same way. Okay, let's go right up here. Now then, you have to make some big decisions here. Where is the light striking your mountain? Touch, and just let it flow right down the mountain. See there? No pressure, no pressure. I know you get tired of hearing me say that, because I say it over and over. But it's most important, that's the number one problem that people experience when they're trying to, to make this knife work, is they get too strong with it. Take a weak pill. Hmm. Very, very gentle. Very gentle. There we go. Give a little pull right there. See? And you sort of just form your mountain. Decide where you want everything to live and put it in because you can create all kinds of fantastic effects. Just let it flow right down the side. One thing that's really worth mentioning here, notice the angles. All these angles are basically the same because if light's coming across here, it's only gonna hit on a given angle. So that's sort of a good rule of thumb, is to keep all your angles basically the same. They don't have to be exactly the same, but basically the same, you know. Maybe this comes right on around wherever, wherever. There we go. Very little pressure though. That little roll of paint is actually all that's touching the canvas. The knife blade probably is probably is not even touching it, except when you run out of paint. Maybe this one here comes right down like that, wherever you want it. This is just straight titanium white. Now you could add a little color to it if you wanted to. It's up to you. Okay, now I'm gonna take white, white. Let's use a little Prussian blue in it. White and little Prussian blue. Little Prussian blue. It's a very strong color. Extremely, extremely strong color. Be careful with it. Okay, now once again, cut off our little roll of paint, just like so. Now we can go back up in here and begin making big decisions. Is this peak behind that one? If it is, do this one first. Touch it, just give it a little pull. Okay, next one, let it just gently flow. No pressure, no pressure. Right over it, and see? That easy, it pushes that one back. Pushes that one back. Tremendous power you have. No pressure. we we'll just bring these together right here. Zoom. Just sort of let them flow together. Okay. Right in here we'll have some shadow. Basically, for every highlight, you need a shadow. There we go. Just drop them in. Drop them in. Okay, maybe right in here there's another one, wherever. And you can just sort of work back and forth with your color here. Now you can firm up those edges. Maybe this one comes out here. Sort of comes around. There it is. 
You can do unbelievable things. Now behind this one, once again, we need a little shadow. A little shadow. And he lives right out here. Maybe this shadow comes. There it is, there it comes. But just, it, it's unreal. I get, I painted a million mountains and every time I paint another one, I get excited about it. Cause it's just unbelievable. Watch, watch right here. Maybe, there it is. Maybe there's a peak that lives in there. Just put him in. See, it doesn't look like too much right now. But watch what happens when you give him his own private little shadow. See, once you give him a shadow, then he becomes an individual, just pops right out there. Let's bring him right on around, like so. Isn't that fantastic what you can do? And you can. You can, maybe, watch here. See, we'll just play some games today with mountain peaks. Anywhere you wanna show a little peak, just put in a little, a little highlight then come back and drop in a, a little shadow. See, there we go, there we go. And you can put as many or as few as you want in your mountain. So I'm gonna, if I don't watch out here, I'm gonna cover up his whole canvas with just layer after layer of mountain, which is all right. It's a super way to learn. And any time that you learn, you're not losing. Because if there's a secret to this style of painting, or any style of painting, it's practice, that's all. Just practice. And I'm just tapping the base here to create the illusion of mist. But follow the angles. Follow those angles. It's most, most important. Most important. Like so. go, lift upward, see, you can make it so soft and here you can just sort of bring it together, trying to keep my arm out of your way, there, just bring it together, soften it all out, well you got one son of a gun of a mountain there, now then, we got us a mountain, let's begin working forward in our scene to see what we can make, we can use that same old mountain color, let's see what we got here, into that, let me add some white, some white, see what we got, maybe a little more white, there, looking for a blue-gray color, like so, yeah, that's a pretty nice color, okay, let me clean my knife off, and, and, me, yeah, we'll use the old fan brush. Let's just go right through here with a fan brush, load both sides of it, just like so. Just like so, okay? Now maybe back in here lives all kinds of little trees. All I'm doing is tapping downward. Just tap downward with a fan brush. See there? It makes the indication of distant little trees. Just an indication. We're not looking for a lot of detail because it's too far away. When we get into the foreground, then we'll begin worrying about detail. But back here, back here, all you see are basic shapes. Just basic shapes, and maybe right on wherever. This is the easiest way I've ever seen of making a lot of little trees very quickly. Very quickly. You can paint a whole forest. And maybe a few of them here and there. Maybe you can make out a little detail on them. Just like so. See, maybe there's another one here, wherever you want them. Wherever. Maybe even in here, there's another one. See, just drop him in. Maybe this one here. We See, you can make these son of a gun just grow right before your eyes. There. color down here at the base, same color, same color. Take our two inch brush, maybe we'll have some water. So all we do is pull straight down, just grab that color, pull it straight down, and it creates an instant reflection. 
instant reflections. Okay, go across. Now then, take another fan brush, and with just a little bit of white on it, I'm just going to touch here and pull up. It makes, it makes sort of an indication like his little trunks, way back hidden there. Touch it, just pull it straight up. See? Just touch it and pull it up. If you get a little too much, just keep working it, and the color will eat up that white, and it'll go away. Just go right away. Maybe right there. There we go. Wash off the old brush. And grab the knife, touch a little bit of the liquid white, pull it out very flat, just as flat as you can get it, and sort of, sort of cut across. Let's go up in here and just begin cutting in a little water line. There. There you go. See there? All kinds of little things happening there. There. As many or as few as you want. It's up to you. Up to you. Okay. Tell you what must do. Grab the old fan brush again. I think it's time to have some fun. I think we'll have some fun. Let me clean off a spot here. Got too many things going on in this one palette. That's one thing I ought to mention. Uh, I have people write and say they, they went out and got a palette and it's not like mine. It's, it, it's real clear. My palette normally is crystal clear crystal clear but for television they make me <laughs> they make me take sandpaper and sand it so it's not shiny if it was shiny all the lights would reflect off of it and you would get big flares on your television but it's just like your palette even the the furrows on the brush are taped so they don't shine I'm just mixing up all the dark colors here okay Tell you what, let's do. Let's use the old one inch brush today. Could do it with a fan brush or the two inch brush. Let's do the one inch. I'll make, I'll make some happy little evergreen trees. Pull the brush through the paint and wiggle it as you pull it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And then sharpen it. And that'll bring that brush to a super sharp chisel edge. Look at there. Sharp. Mm. And it takes a lot of paint. If you don't have a lot of paint on the bristles, they're not going to stick together. That's the only thing that holds these bristles together is a lot of paint. And maybe right there. See how sharp it is though? You can literally make a line with it. Let's take the corner of the brush and let's just make, well, let's just make us a happy little evergreen tree that lives right there. Tap downward using the corner of the brush. As you work down the tree, you use more and more pressure. So you're using a larger portion of the brush but you start with one corner and you use that same corner all the way through the tree. Just sort of work back and forth, back and forth. Okay, tell you what, maybe, yep, you're right. You knew there was a tree there. There he is. And just let him grow right out of the brush. They live in there. You have to sort of scare them out sometime. But they're there. Tell you, maybe, let's have a whole forest today. Give you a lot of good practice making some nice trees. There. See, there's another one. Maybe he comes right on down wherever you want him. See, just make him rascals grow. <laughs> there, a little more paint. And normally I reload the brush after each and every tree. Okay, let's go over here on the other side. Maybe. Shoot, I take, let's get crazy. Yep, maybe there's a big tree. Maybe he lives right there. He goes clean off the canvas. Boy, that is a big son of a guy. He probably picks on these little ones here. Right over your mountain. Oh, that hurts. After you spend so much time making a beautiful mountain and put a tree over it. This. There. Down, down, down. Still tapping. There. Mm. 
Well, I said big tree. I wasn't kidding, was it? Now we'll come back and we'll put some highlights on these trees. All we're doing here is just, just painting the back of the tree. I tell you what, maybe there's two big trees. And in your painting, you put as many or as few trees as you want because we each see nature through different eyes. So paint it the way you see it. Paint it the way that makes you happy. Because painting should make you happy. It should set you free. It has no boundaries. You can go anywhere you want to go in a painting. You can do anything that you want to do. You can make any kind of world that you want. You can create your vision. And that's, that's really, that's the joy of painting is the fact that you can, you can create. It gives you freedom. It gives you freedom. And we're all looking for a touch of that. There. Okay. Well, I'm turning this whole painting into a forest. That's all right, though. At least we're getting some good practice making trees. There's another one. It lives right there. See, after you finish this painting, you won't ever again have problems making evergreen trees. There we go. Now, normally when I'm doing winter scenes, I don't use any green in my evergreen trees, mainly because if you're, if you're having snow below those trees, if you ever pull a little bit of the, of the green into your snow, it just it doesn't look right. <laughs> green snow is just, that's worse than yellow snow. So, I normally just use these dark colors with a blue base, and then you can intentionally, I'll show you, and we'll put some snow in this, shoot, why not, why not, why not? I take, let me grab the old fan brush here, I'll do, let's do one with a fan brush, you can see how, maybe there's one that lives right here, right here. We'll show his whole trunk just by tapping all the way down, there's this, there's this little, or maybe this tree, maybe he's not doing too good. Maybe he's a little sick. A little sick. See, he just has some little limbs living here and there. But you can see a lot of his trunk. Poor tree. There. Something like so. Now then, tell you what. Let's just go right in titanium white. Let's do some snow. We don't, we don't need all that water. Just, I'll use the big brush here. Let's go right up here. Decide where you want your snow to start. Grab it and just pull. Be brave. Grab some of that dark color and pull it. Now you have to begin forming the land here. See, I wanna grab that dark. It makes nice shadows underneath the trees. Look at there then just place some of this white right over the top of it. But see how easy it is to make all kinds of fantastic little snowy areas. And it's smooth, it's very smooth. This is virgin snow here. Nobody's walked in it yet. It's nice and smooth. See there? Isn't that a super nice way to make a little snowy area? Maybe, maybe somebody wants to walk down here. So let's make them a little path. I'm gonna take white, a little touch of phthalo blue. White, just on the fan brush. Something like so. Okay, now decide where do you wanna walk here. Maybe there's a little path. Comes right down. Just sort of back and forth here. And let it get bigger and bigger as it gets towards you. As it comes towards you, let it get larger. Where does this go? Maybe right on over here. There. And you can make it as distinct or as soft as you want. It's your path. You do with it as you please. Take a little, little white here. Watch it. Maybe I want to bring out a little, little projection right there. Bring it right into the path. Like so. Can't tell you what. I'm gonna get a one-inch brush here. I'm gonna dip it right into a little touch of the of the liquid white, 
and go right into titanium white. Pull it in one direction. Load a lot of paint into it. Let's go right up here. Maybe there's a, some little snow-covered bushes that live right up against these trees. Just touch it, give the brush a little upward push. But you need it against that dark so it shows up. If you put it against just white snow, you're not going to get anything. Okay, maybe there's another one right there. Little frosty bushes. See how easy those are to make? And they're beautiful little sun guns. Should look like lace. Look just like lace. We don't want this side to be left out. Let's put one or two over here. There's one. Lives right out there. You know, this is a this is the last show of the twelfth series. It's always sort of sad to to come to the last show. I'm, I'm going to miss you for a few days. But we have another series already under production. We've already started on another one. So if you'll have us back, I'll be back. As I mentioned earlier, there's now over 150 Joy Painting shows. And if you hadn't got to see them all, give your local station a call. Tell them you'd like to see them. And they're available to them. And I'd like to thank you for once again allowing me into your home. I've had so many super, super friends I've made, and I appreciate it. I really and truly appreciate it. A little phthalo blue and white on the fan brush. I just want to come along in here, and here and there, put the indication of a little highlight on these. Just here and there, not too much. Don't want to lose the contrast, like so. Okay. And with that, I think this painting is finished. Once again, thank you for allowing me to be into your home. And until next time, keep the old brush working. Happy painting and God bless. Mm -hmm.